Isaiah is with us in Columbus, Ohio. Hi, Isaiah. How are you? Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Same here. You're kind of on a constant loop in our home. My daughter calls you Uncle Dave. Uh oh. <laughs> um, so I wanted to know. Um, we watched that a lot, and uh, one of the shows, uh, someone said something about alpacas, and uh, I, at the time you laughed and thought it was pretty funny, apparently. But I just wanted to know, since my wife and I uh, were saving up and working to uh, start our own ranch and uh, raise alpacas, I want to know if you knew something that I didn't, and maybe uh, I should change course or something. I don't even remember what you're talking about, but um, I guess I can comment on alpacas. I was trying. I think we were talking about emus, weren't we? Uh, I believe so. It was yeah, you and a bunch uh, of people Hogan. went broke several years ago because there was this emu fad, and a bunch of people bought emus, and then there was there's supposed to be this uh, huge demand for the meat, and it was uh -huh. basically a bunch of crap. There was no demand for emu meat, and uh, pretty soon people just had dead emus everywhere. But um, uh, you know, alpacas. I, I mean, I. I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on alpacas. I'm not even an expert on ranches. Uh, but from a business perspective, I think you're entering a pretty narrow market. Agreed, yes. And you better really know your stuff, and you better really do this. You can't do it just because you read in some article about alpacas are making people rich, because they're not. I mean, any more, than mm -hmm. any more than cows are making people rich. Cows make people pretty poor all the time, and some of them, they make people rich. But mm -hmm. it, it's, it has to do with running a business uh, called cattle, you know, and mm -hmm. it's a business. And when it ceases to be a business and starts to be a fad um, or never becomes a business because all it is is a fad, then there you go. So what is the deal? What do you, what do you get out of alpacas? What's the end product? The end product is the fleece. Uh, you can, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, you can uh, turn it into sweaters and uh, socks and so forth. Um, it's right. very similar to cashmere in the mm -hmm. quality of the fleece. Yeah. Um, and uh, there, you can also breed and, uh, of course, sell them mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and show them and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's almost completely about the fleece. Uh, and the big part of it is it's uh, hypoallergenic and stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, with everybody that has allergies, my, my children, for example, have allergies. Um, and are you a it, rancher? Than have, you, have you been in agriculture and ranching before? No, this would be my first venture into it. Mm -hmm. um, so why would you and, take uh, your first venture into ranching and do it with a very narrow product line? Well... That is actually the second half of it. Um, the first start I'll be starting with is goats, and I've uh, uh, my I don't have all of the expertise myself. It's uh, a good friend of mine who does, and we're going to be working together. Mm -hmm. And has made lots of money on alpacas and goats. Not alpacas. That's oh. a different thing. But um, the goats uh, they did in their native country. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, it, it sounds like you're going into something you're inexperienced in, and um, I, I, obviously I'm going to tell you don't borrow money to do it, because oh, whatever no. money you may put into this m may go away. Because you, uh, you know, from a business perspective, you just got a very narrow demand uh, product line that the general public is not aware of, mm -hmm. and um, so it's not like you're... You know, cow hides, leather, obviously, would be a completely different thing, a broad market sure. for that. And, um, or... or wool obviously there's a broad market for that and so forth but if you've studied the market and you understand who's uh, thing I, I'm, I don't want to just trust a guy who once raised an alpaca halfway around the world and his family did that for two generations or something that's that is a bad idea i mean you're in the united states and you need to think about how, you need to understand exactly how this is going to turn into money and how like likely it is, because you're talking about a business here. But you can't get enamored with uh, hypoallergenic, narrow market stuff because your kids have allergies. That's a good way to lose all your money. So you need to look at the business aspect of this. Where does this turn into money, and what, how many steps does it take to turn into money, and how much money does it turn into, and how likely is it to turn into money? And because it scares the crap out of me, you're in a really narrow market, a fad like market. And it sounds like you've got a guy from another country who has come along and told you goats and alpacas worked in another market and another country. And now you think they're going to uh, work in Columbus, Ohio. I, I just I don't know. Um, again, I'm not an expert, but it just sounds weird. So um, 
I would want to know a whole lot more about it. If somebody brings something in here that feels weird to me, usually I find out the reason it felt weird is because it was weird. And uh, so you just kind of got to get down into it and go, okay, what's the problems with this? What am I not seeing? What are my blind spots? And really study it because otherwise every dollar you're putting at risk here could be gone.